In this video I'll be doing something a little different and showing you the build process of a personal project of mine which is this super high-end portable studio microphone for field recording. Now before we begin I just want to thank today's sponsor Audioblocks because this video wouldn't have happened without them. They're currently providing all of the music used in it, so pay attention as you watch, and if you like what you hear, do check them out using the link in the description, because currently they're offering one whole year's access, unlimited access, to their entire royalty-free music and sound effects library for just $99 at the moment, which compared to other sites that charge per track is an absolutely brilliant deal. And if you're still not sure, they do offer a seven day free trial and you still get to keep all the tracks you download, even if you cancel. So again, a huge thanks to Audioblocks and I hope you enjoy the music. So why did I build this microphone instead of just going with a portable little unit with everything included like this one? Well, when sound engineers want to record high quality audio in quiet environments, one of the biggest obstacles to overcome is the noise floor of the microphone. Little recorders like this use small capsules that are limited by physics, so they have naturally higher noise floors than studio microphones, which are significantly larger. For example, here's a comparison between a Zoom H2, which has a fairly typical noise floor for a small capsule device, and a Rode NT1A Studio Mic, which has one of the lowest noise floors of any microphone ever. So as you hopefully heard, the Rode was significantly less noisy than the Zoom, making it much more suitable for field recording in quiet environments. And this is why sound engineers take studio microphones out into the field rather than relying on little portable recorders with everything included. But the problem is, doing that means you have to take a ton of gear with you, such as the preamps, a power source, two microphones and wind covers for them, which for me as an amateur recordist is just way too much. So what I decided to do was make it all in one, which resulted in this. Now this might look quite simple on the outside, but it's got a lot of gear packed inside. For example, there are two Rode NT1A microphones in here, along with a preamp, phantom power, and a huge battery to power it all, which makes it last for 24 hours continuous. And obviously with a strap, it means that I can just sling it over my shoulder and it's uh, nice and portable. Now you may have noticed that there is a recorder on top and that doubles as a handle. And you might be wondering why it's on these straps and that's elastic because this is triple shock mounted to make handling noise a non-issue so that you literally can take high quality recordings without a tripod, which is fairly significant if, if, if you're out on a hike, for example. So I'm sure you're wanting to hear how this sounds with some sound samples, but first I just want to show you the build process. So the first step was to remove the microphone covers. As you can see, this one is super dusty, uh, not my fault as it was second hand, so it did need a good clean later on in the build. This blue PCB is essentially the microphone's power regulator and amplifier, but its output is too low to be fed directly into the recorder, so its signal needed to be boosted by yet another amplifier. These had to be made from scratch because the commercial options were either too noisy, too expensive or too large. Thankfully there was an excellent schematic for a low noise preamp over at Elliott Sound Products which I modified slightly to also provide phantom power to the microphones as well. Designing the PCBs for these was super easy thanks to a free piece of software called Fritzing, where it was just a case of rearranging the components into a sensible layout. I then used a CNC, about which my next video will be about by the way, to etch out my design onto a circuit board blank, which was then populated with components. Once both amplifiers were completed, I then pretty much made a PCB sandwich, consisting of a grounded sheet of aluminium in the middle, to which were screwed the microphone's original blue PCBs, followed by my homemade amplifiers on the outsides. The capsules were then strapped on with cable ties, 
As you can see, I mounted them at a slight angle to help them capture a nice, wide stereo soundscape. Also, sound waves that come from the sides hit the capsules at slightly different intervals, due to their distance apart. This mimics a similar effect in human hearing, which gives recordings an incredibly rich and open quality, as you'll hear later. I then got some fine metal mesh and used it to make two grills to cover the capsules. As you can see, the whole unit isn't much larger than the original microphone, despite it now including not only two microphones and their original PCBs, but the preamps and phantom power circuits as well. The next step was to make the frame. A large bird feeder was perfect for this, as it was strong enough and about the right size. I used small aluminium plates to hold the switches and charging ports, and a voltage regulator using an LM2577 MOSFET was used to boost the battery voltage up to 25 volts for the preamp circuit. For gain control, I used a rotary switch with resistors of carefully selected values in order to maximise dynamic range depending on the loudness of the environment. Using elastic, I then suspended the microphone inside the bird feeder. Having it suspended like this pretty much eliminates handling noise, as it essentially works like a shock mount. The final thing to do was add the wind cover. This was made out of some furry fabric that was acoustically transparent enough not to affect the high frequencies much. This cover does a fantastic job, as it eliminates one of the real enemies of outdoor recording, which is of course wind noise. As for the handle, that was made out of a Zoom H1 with its end chopped off. The reason I chose the H1 was because of its shape, and also because it has an excellent line level input, which actually takes advantage of its 24-bit analog to digital converter, allowing for exceptional dynamic range. So how about those sound samples? Well, I've not actually had the opportunity to get some really good ambiences yet, but rather awesomely, whilst I was editing this video, there was a thunderstorm, so I quickly grabbed the microphone and got a recording. Note how the thunder seemingly ripples across the sky. Sounds pretty good. Here are a few of the samples I got today, starting with the sea. And now some wind in the trees. As for the lack of hiss, well, can you hear any? That's my finger on my phone. <laughs> so I've just done some exercise to get my heart rate up. Can you hear it? I know I can hear the neighbours. <laughs> So hopefully that's given you a good idea of what this microphone rig is capable of. It was certainly a challenge to build, but the end result certainly made it all worthwhile. So that's it for this video, don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed it, and remember to check out this week's sponsor Audioblocks. I enjoyed browsing their library for music to use in this video, so if you're in the market for some production music you really should check them out. Again they have a free trial at the moment, and you get to keep all of the tracks you download completely forever. You can find a link to it in the description, but other than that, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.